Would you pray with me? Come Holy Spirit. Move in this place and in our hearts. Speak to us about the mystery of how we experience God's grace through the sacraments. Help us to not only understand, but also to experience Christ's presence with us here today in life-changing ways. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, who makes it possible for us to enter into a relationship with God. Amen. You know, there are some experiences in life that stand out as turning points or life-changing moments. I remember my baptism as one of those moments. I remember walking down the steps into the warm water of the baptistry where my pastor waited for me. I remember the words he said, Mindy, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And he gently lowered me into the water. I felt the water surround me as I was immersed in God's love. And I felt the water washing away all of my sins. Then Pastor Rick lifted me up out of the water, and I took a deep breath, and I sensed the newness of my life, now cleansed by God's grace, and filled with the power of the Holy Spirit to walk with my Savior, Jesus Christ, for the rest of my life. I remember returning to the little dressing room, dripping with God's grace. I remember changing clothes and returning to the sanctuary where Pastor Rick said that I would need spiritual nourishment for my new life. And then he served me the Lord's Supper. It looked like a saltine cracker and a tiny cup of grape juice. But by God's grace, it was for me the body and blood of Jesus Christ, given to feed my soul. I remember the salty taste of the cracker as I ate it, and the sweet smell and the taste of the grape juice as it wet my tongue and slid down my throat. I will remember forever those moments when my life was transformed, when I was marked by the water as one of God's children, and when I tasted the goodness of God's grace as I ate his meal. The water and the bread and the juice and the rituals of baptism and Holy Communion were for me a means of experiencing God's grace. You know, we as Christians often talk about God's grace, but explaining grace is kind of hard to do. It's so big of a concept. The word grace means gift or something given freely, even though it is not deserved. Some define grace as God's unmerited favor. We could talk about God's grace all day, and talking about God's grace might help us to rationally understand what the word means, but it is when we personally experience God's grace that our lives are changed. And so today I want to talk to you about two ways that Jesus gave to us for experiencing God's grace, baptism and Holy Communion or the Lord's Supper. Sometimes baptism and Holy Communion are referred to as sacraments. Sacraments are sacred moments that Jesus gave to us by clear instruction and example in Scripture. Sacraments involve our physical senses through outward and visible signs, such as through feeling the water, smelling and tasting the bread and the juice. Sacraments also involve our spiritual senses through an inward and spiritual work of God's grace. And so when we participate in the sacraments of baptism and Holy Communion, through faith, we can experience God's grace through the common everyday elements of water, bread, and juice. Let me tell you a little about the origin of these two sacraments. As I mentioned before, Jesus gave us these two means of grace by his example and by his instruction. Baptism marked the beginning of Jesus' public ministry. 
We can read about it in Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 11, as well as in Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17, and Luke chapter 3, verses 21 and 22. This morning we'll read Mark's version. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. So you see, Jesus was baptized, setting an example for us to follow. And later he gave his disciples instructions about baptizing those who believe in him. At the end of his earthly ministry, Jesus entrusted the ministry of baptism to his disciples. According to Matthew 28, 19, and 20, the last thing Jesus said to his disciples after his resurrection and just before he ascended into heaven was about baptizing others. Jesus said, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Christian baptism marks our new identity in Christ as an adopted child of God. Just as circumcision was the sign of the old covenant between God and Abraham and Abraham's descendants, baptism is the sign of the new covenant between God and those who put their faith in God's Son, Jesus the Christ. Now the amount of water used for baptism may vary. Some people prefer to be immersed, which means to be put under the water. Immersion is a good way to symbolize being buried with Christ and raised with Christ to walk in newness of life. This aspect of baptism is described in Romans chapter 6, verses 3 and 4. Another way to be baptized, baptized is by sprinkling, as described in Ezekiel 36, 25, which says, I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. In the United Methodist Church, we recognize both of these modes of baptism as well as pouring as appropriate for celebrating the baptismal covenant between God and the person being baptized. In the United Methodist Church, we also believe that baptism is appropriate for persons of any age. In the baptism of children not yet ready to make their own profession of faith, we celebrate God's unconditional love and promise for children's lives. Jesus said, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Mark 10, 14. In the baptism of children, through the commitment of the parents or guardians and the congregation, God's love is made real, and God's prevenient grace is celebrated. Prevenient grace is God at work in our lives before we even know him. It is how God works in the life of a child so that he or she will come to faith in Jesus Christ. In the baptism of a child not yet ready to fully profess his or her own faith, the parents in the congregation vow to nurture the child in the Christian faith so that one day the child will choose to accept God's offer of a relationship and make his or her own profession of faith and vows to God and to the church. When this happens, the action begun in the baptism of the child comes to completion later through his or her confirmation. On the other hand, when adults or young people ready to make their own profession of faith are baptized, we celebrate both God's love and his justifying grace together in one act. Justifying grace becomes active in our life when we acknowledge our need for a Savior and put our faith in Jesus who died on the cross for our sins. When this is the case, the one being baptized accepts God's offer of a relationship and is cleansed and incorporated into Christ's body, the church, and accepts full responsibility 
as a member of the church. Obviously, the person being baptized may have asked Jesus to be his or her Savior and invited Jesus into their heart sometime before, but baptism is the celebration of that decision and the sign of the covenant between God and the person that began when they put their faith in Christ. Baptism is the sacrament that we only experience once in the United Methodist Church. The reason we are only baptized once is that we believe that baptism is the sign of the covenant between God and the person. A covenant that God offers. And God is always faithful to his covenant. Always faithful to his relationships. God offers this relationship to everyone. But not everyone accepts his offer and enters into that relationship. Baptism is the sign of that relationship. Kind of like a ring is the sign of the marriage covenant relationship. Now while it is true that sometimes after we are baptized, we fail to be faithful to our part of the relationship, still God is always faithful. God never gives up on the relationship. He never divorces us. Or to use the other analogy, God never unadopts or disowns any of his children, even though some of his children sometimes run away and live apart from God. But if the runaway so chooses, all they have to do is return to their father God, like we read about in the parable of the prodigal or lost son. God always remains faithful. He waits for his children to return, and his covenant stands forever. So one baptism is all we need. But we do need a regular reminder of our relationship, our covenant with God. And so Jesus gave us the second sacrament, which we celebrate often as a means of experiencing God's grace. The second sacrament is Holy Communion, also known as the Lord's Supper or the Eucharist. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23, 23 through 26, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus instituted this sacrament during his last supper with his disciples. He commanded them to continue sharing the bread and the cup of the new covenant in remembrance of him. After his resurrection, Jesus shared the meal, a meal with the travelers he met on the road to Emmaus. And when Jesus broke the bread, their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Since the time of the earliest Christians, disciples of Jesus have shared in this sacramental meal where the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is represented to all who come to receive in faith. When we come to the Lord's table, to, we come to the banquet table of God. I consider it a great honor and a very humbling experience to preside at the Lord's table table and to serve God's people this sacred meal. I always pray that it truly will be a means of grace for all who participate. After a communion service one day, Brody, a boy I know, said to his mother, that body of Christ sure tastes good. <laughs> yes, it does taste good. God makes himself known to us in such simple, natural elements as bread and juice and water because he wants us to taste and to smell and to feel and to experience his grace. Today is a very special day in the life of our church because we are going to celebrate both of the sacraments that Jesus gave to us. 
I pray that each of us will experience God's grace in a personal and meaningful way as we participate in this special celebration.